Let's, um, um, all right, good afternoon. Um, the, um, um, given the literal text in front of me that says the thing I'm about to say out loud, um, but I'm going to read it now. The uh, December 17th meeting of the Electric Control Review Board will come to order. We'll begin by calling the roll. Uh, Commissioner Beth? I think you're muted. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Phillips? Here. Uh, and um, I'm Daniel Biss. The chair is here as well. Um, so we have a forum. In fact, we have a full complement. We're ready to do our work. Um, I'll begin. Uh, by entertaining a motion. Oh, um, before we start, there was one error in the agenda. Uh, the agenda did not have public comment on it. Um, so um, we'll have public comment now. Um, um, anyhow, in, in compliance with the Open Meetings Act, is there any um, member of the public either in the room or on the Zoom uh, who would like to give a public comment? Just to be clear, this is Anybody who's here to speak about a particular agenda item will be given the opportunity when we get to that agenda item. But if someone wants to make a general public comment, now is the time to do it. Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll now move to item two on our agenda approval of the August 26th meeting minutes. Would anyone like to make a motion on this matter? Uh, I'll move to uh, approve the on August 26th. Commissioner Phillips moves adoption, uh, approval of the August 26th meeting minutes. Is there a second? I second. Commissioner Macbeth seconds. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, Commissioner Macbeth? No. Oh, but yes? Oh yeah, I said I second a yes. Yeah, great. Uh, Commissioner Macbeth votes yes. Uh, Commissioner Phillips? Yes. And I also vote yes, so I'll vote three to zero, the minutes are approved. Um, this brings us to um, Hugh Spirits that is, um, has three different applications in. Um, so I think we will discuss items A, B, and C together and then possibly just um, a vote on them as one package unless some reason emerges to not do that. Um, I saw Mr. Letko is in the Zoom. Uh, Mr. Letko, do you want to speak to the application? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is Paul Vletko. I'm the uh, founder of Few Spirits on kind of the southeast corner of town. And uh, if you're guessing, most people are at least vaguely familiar with us. But over several years, we have been lucky enough to grow the business. And uh, over the over this growth, we have worked closely with various city officials to ensure that we are in full and total legal compliance. Uh, over the last several weeks, it's my understanding that there has been a view uh, that there may be some opinions changing uh, at the city. And so we are trying to ensure that we maintain uh, our complete and total uh, adherence to city rules and regulations. And we are seeking to get full licenses for each of our properties. Uh, none of these properties have any activity other than storage. Uh, or bottling. And so we are simply trying to get full licensing across uh, all four of our properties. Uh, one of them, the original at 918 Chicago Avenue is fully and totally and properly licensed. Uh, and you know, given a change in city policy internally, uh, we're seeking to make sure that all three of our other spaces are uh, in compliance. Uh, nothing's fundamentally changing other than we're trying to make sure we're, that we're straight and tight. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Thanks. Uh, are there any questions uh, from the commissioners? Yes, I, could, I guess I just have one question, Commissioner Phillips. Yes, uh, one question. You mentioned uh, you mentioned four businesses. Uh, I guess we've only got three on the agenda, which, which appear to be the storage facilities um, on Dempster, South Boulevard, and Main Street. You mentioned the Chicago Avenue. So I was just curious about. I think the, the business today is just having to do with the, the licensing on. Dumpster South Boulevard and Main Street. Is that correct, Brian? So, so let me see if I can explain. So my understanding is that there's the your four facilities were all operating under a single license. And now you're being asked to have four separate licenses. So the license in full will continue to work, be operative for the address on Chicago Avenue. And you're applying for three additional licenses uh, to cover the three different 
uh, the three other addresses? Correct. Yeah. So our original property at 918, which you can kind of see in the fake picture behind me, uh, that has been fully and totally properly licensed for whatever it is, call it 10 years for, unless I look up the date, it doesn't matter, 10 years. Uh, and then now we're trying to make sure that we have separate licenses for all three of the other facilities. Uh, so we currently we have one license and uh, ideally at the end of council action, we will have a total of four licenses. Thank you. And I, you know, I shouldn't have interjected there. Brian, I think, I think Commissioner Phillips was, was, at, was asking Brian to address this. Do you want, Brian, you, you kind of explained the history of this to me at one point. Do you want to share that for the, the full commission and, and the public? Uh, sure. So um, Fuse Facilities at 918 Chicago already has a local liquor license, and they have these three other storage facilities, which are subject of the licenses on the agenda today. Um, it was brought to my attention by um, somebody, I think, believe uh, somebody working for FU that the Illinois Liquor Commission was not issuing state licenses for those these three other facilities because it didn't have a liquor license, a local liquor license. Um, it, I don't know why it was never an issue for the state uh, commission before, but it, it's an issue. So um, the Fuse liquor license only puts their 918 Chicago Avenue address. Um, and, you know, the, that was the only facility they applied for a liquor license for. So I, if the Illinois liquor license, liquor commission requires local, a liquor, a local liquor license for these three other facilities, then um, that's why we put it on the agenda. Right. So just to just to, to clarify that this is it's really kind of a we become aware of a regulation that we maybe were not fully aware of in the past. Is that really what changed here? Uh, pretty much. Got it. Thank you. And I want to thank you, Brian, for joining us. Brian's not here in person in part because he's he's sick, but um, thanks so much for notwithstanding your illness, being able to, to be a part of the meeting via Zoom. Um, are there any further questions? Mm -hmm. uh, seeing none, I would entertain a motion. And certainly, if the commissioners plan on voting the same way on A, B, and C, there's no reason not to make a single motion on all three at once. Yeah, I move to approve the uh, five license for emergency. The commissioner Phillips moves to approve. Three P5 licenses for a few spirits LLC DBA few spirits, one on Dempster, one on South Boulevard, and one on Main Street. Is there a second? I second it. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the roll. Commissioner Macbeth? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Yes. Uh, Mayor Bisbeth, yes. Uh, so on a vote of three to zero, items A, B, and C all pass. Um, and Given the, uh, would it be possible to request a waiver of the rules so that at council it can be introduced and acted on in the same meeting? Uh, yeah, I'll email um, the council member Braithwaite and I believe it's Bede, but it's, yeah, I can, I'll ask them to do that so it can all be introduced and acted upon at the uh, January 10th meeting. Wonderful. Yeah, so those, those are, it's council members Braithwaite and Fleming. Uh, Fleming, okay. Dempster and Street are in the second ward, and the South Boulevard is in the ninth ward. And typically, the way it usually goes, uh, Mr. Fletko, is they would they would just ask that that happen, and then everyone would ordinarily no promises, but ordinarily everyone would just agree, and the vote would happen without a lot of, a lot of uh, controversy on January tenth. Yeah, I, I don't anticipate much controversy, but I do want to make the request. Yeah, perfect. The request is noted, and um, hopefully that will be successful. Uh, thanks, thanks so much, everybody. Take care. Um, this brings us to item D on the agenda, which is uh, 633 Outpost LLC doing business with Estacion. Uh, is someone here from Estacion to speak to this application? Yes, uh, Marcos Rivera. Great, Mr. Rivera, go ahead. Um, so looking for a uh, full liquor license. Yeah, so I was looking, you know, looking for a full liquor license for a restaurant um, on Howard. We uh, we started this project 
you know, right before COVID and got hit, you know, with COVID. So it kind of put everything on, on hold. And um, now, you know, we're back at it and hopefully, you know, we can get it open relatively soon, but we're looking, um, you know, to, to be open lunch and dinner and have a serve um, beer, wine and um, mixed drinks as well. Thank you. Other questions for Mr. Rivera? Um, any more questions? I would entertain a motion. I move to approve the Class B license for uh, Stacion. Uh, Commissioner Phillips, I uh, move to approve of the Class D license for uh, 653 Howard, uh, 653 Outpost LLC doing business as a Stacion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Uh, sorry, I've got seconds. Is there a discussion? Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll call the roll, Commissioner Phillips. Uh, yes. Commissioner Macbeth. Yes. Uh, Mayor Biswas, yes. On a vote of three to zero, the, um, the motion passes and the, uh, the approval recommendation will go to council. Uh, Mr. Rivera, did you want to make a similar request to have the uh, rules suspended so that uh, introduction and action can both take place on January 10th? Right. Yes, if possible, please. Great, thank you. Um, so, Brian, if you could forward that request to Council Member Reed. Yes, it will. Okay. Great, thank you. So then that'll that'll have to come to Council Member Reed. But again, I think ordinarily, if if that if that's the Council Member's preference, typically the, the City Council would be inclined to um, to go along with that. Um, thank you very much. Um, this brings us to item E, uh, Village Farm Stand. Looks like we have some folks to speak to Village Farm Stand. Perfect, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rivera, congratulations. Thank you. Um, well, go ahead. Well, um, I want to thank you guys for uh, for creating the LP liquor license category. Uh, as I explained before, we're a small- You might just say your name for the record. My name is Matt Waxler. I'm the owner of Village Farm Stand also. A uh, living at the Sims on our living day. Um, and uh, we are applying for the liquor license under the new LP category to uh, uh, sell uh, a limited supply of uh, craft beers and spirits that are, that are produced here in Illinois and some that are produced here in Evanston. And thank you to Brian for his help for uh, helping us with the, the application. I'll can I excuse you for a minute? It's very hard to understand you, and I don't know whether it's the mask or, but it's very hard. I can't understand what you're saying. I'm sorry. Project a little. I could, I could speak up a little more. That will help. Thank you. So he was explaining basically that he was coming to apply for the license that was created for him. Uh, with the, the L2 license for small grocery stores and small small liquor displays. Um, and I don't know if there's anything you want to repeat from your presentation in particular. We're, um, we're a new business in Evanston. We started uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, we primarily sell um, local produce and other local pantry items. Uh, and we're looking to sell uh, spirits and craft beers that are produced in Illinois and uh, some that are produced here in Evanston. Thank you. Any questions from the commission? Where is the where is this actual physical site located? I can't find it here. The, the site is located at eight ten Dempster Street, um, yeah. six oh six uh, six oh two oh two. So right on the uh, south side of Dempster, in between Ridge and Chicago. Where Hume used to be. Did you hear that? Thank word? you. Exactly right. What is the Hume uh, Other questions? Um, if not, I would just hand a motion. Uh, I move to uh, 
approve the Class O2 waste for Village Farmstand LLC. Commissioner Phillips makes a historic motion, the first ever motion to approve a Class L2 license here in the city of Evanston uh, to the Village Farmstand LLC, DBA Village Farmstand. Is there a second? I'll second it. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll take the roll. Commissioner Phillips? Yes. Commissioner McBeth? Yes. Uh, Mayor Bisbos, yes. And on a three to zero vote, um, the uh, motion passes. Uh, would you like to request the same? Um, uh, yes, please. I'd like to request the waiver. So what we'll do is we'll have Brian email Council Member Newsom if Council Member Newsom knows his request you can make. And, uh, and uh, my guess, based on his presence here, is that it'll probably be pretty, pretty favorable. But, uh, uh, congratulations and uh, thanks for coming back. Thank you all very much. Very much. Thank you. Good luck to you. Um, this brings us to item F on the agenda. Oh, it looks like someone's waiting to get right into the Zoom. Um, no. What's that? Amin Lakhani for uh, item F. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm here. Perfect. Um, all right. Um, so, honey, do you want to speak to? to item F, the amendment to the class ordinance? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Mayor Bliss. Um, so we are the owners of the Oakton Shell at 2494 Oakton Street, and we were granted a temporary extension of our liquor license uh, hours from 6 a.m. Uh, daily during the COVID uh, pandemic. That was where Evanston declared a state of emergency. We had a lot of customers that got very used to coming in early in the morning before they headed out to work to um, grab their liquor. And uh, once, once that state of emergency ended, our license went back to the 8 a.m. time slot. And uh, that's really affected our bottom line. Uh, some of these customers are uh, you know, upset or finding other places to go. And we were, were here today to request that that extension be made permanent uh, moving forward. Understood. Um, are there... Uh, first of all, Brian, did you have anything to add to that uh, description? Uh, no, that pretty much sums it up. During the state of emergency in the city, the mayor was able to, was given emergency powers that allowed him to set aside some of the restrictions of the liquor code. And that was one of them. Um, I, guess, I, I, I I was not aware of it at the time, but I guess Mayor Haggard, uh, Mayor Haggard did allow uh, 6 a.m. Uh, alcohol sales at this Oakton Shell. Um, and yeah, and then once the state of emergency ended, it went back to what was is codified, which is an 8 a.m. start for alcohol service. Um, yeah, that's the extent of my knowledge of the situation. Uh, if I if I may add one comment that I forgot, please. Go ahead. Uh, so we uh, our state of Illinois license, interestingly, is from 6 a.m. Uh, so I'm not I'm not sure why uh, why that's different, uh, but that's. This would bring us in line with the state of Illinois times. And, um, you know, as, uh, aside from all that, we've been a good, responsible, uh, contributing member of the community. We upgraded our pumps recently at the store. Uh, we did our landscaping and also renewed our Bassett um, certificates to make sure that we're in compliance and uh, serving everything uh, within the law. Thank you. So this would help us keep up, um, keep our, keep up with our business. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um, I will just have like well, one comment. Uh, I emailed council member Reed, I believe it's in the eighth ward and um, just let him know about that this was gonna be on the agenda. Um, let him know about this proposed 6 a.m. start time. And I did not hear back from him one way or the other. So I have no gauge as to what his support is for whatever that's worth, but I just thought I'd share. Well, it's good to know in the sense that if you if you had a concern about it, that would be important. I think, for the true, true. Um, my ahead. concern is, excuse me, my yeah. concern is you may be opening up a can of worms that then all the other places would want to start serving liquor at 6 a.m. I remember before, now I did not know that Mayor Haggerty had made that whatever because I did go before the board to use executive privilege, but we've had conversations about this at the Liquor Control Board before. 
And there is a concern about having liquor or liquor purchasing starting at, at 6 a.m. in the morning and how many other businesses are now going to come and say, well, if they have it at 6 a.m., can we now do it too? Let me ask, if you don't mind, Commissioner Beth, let me ask some follow-ups on that. Um, so first of all, um, Brian, just remind me, I, I know I know this, but remind me how many um, Class O licenses are, there are? Just one, it's the Oakton Shell. And what are there other licenses that have a, currently have an 8 a.m. start time um, where, the, where the, the issue just raised might come up where someone might say, well, hey, you just moved, you just gave the class, oh, 8 a.m. folks, these extra two hours, how about me? Right, um, I don't know off the top of my head what other classes start at 8 a.m., but I believe that grocery stores and, and businesses like that would have a similar start time. I believe, I believe when the issue came up before, it was um, on Oakton, not Oak, yeah, Oakton across from, diagonally across from um, Home Depot, you know, that little place where they have Dunkin' Donuts, it's a whole little whatever there, and they sell alcohol there too. And I think that's the one that wanted to go to 6 a.m. I may be wrong, but that's what I remember. That's our location. Oh, um, that's your um, location. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I thought yeah. the location was further down. Okay. Okay. Got it. And do you know, um, Brian or anybody, um, but realistically, Brian, I think, what exactly Mayor Haggerty's um, action was? Was it specifically for this location, was it specifically for Class O? Was it for a broader? category like what, what exactly did Mayor Haggerty do that we're, that we're seeking to reinstate to an active form? Honestly I don't know I only knew found out about this after the fact. Um, I see a former council member Rainey is on the Zoom she might have an idea um, but I only found out about this after the fact when uh, the folks at the Shell uh, asked about making it permanent um, and I was just looking through the code real quickly uh, the other businesses that have 8 a.m. starts, 8 a.m. start times are generally grocery stores or package stores. Councilmember Rainey, obviously I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you're if you're interested in weighing in, I'm, I'm sure you know the history of this a lot better than I do. Um, may I speak, Mayor? Of course. Okay. Um, well, I actually was the person who requested the original license for the gas station. It, it is really, you could probably survive by only shopping at this gas station. Uh, they have ATM, all every single you know, product you could possibly want. Um, I never felt that the 6 a.m. purchase of uh, packaged liquor was a big deal. Um, I feel that the later you sell liquor is a more problematic issue. Um, most people aren't partying at 6 a.m. in the morning or starting to party. So even if a grocery store asked to sell liquor at 6 a.m. in the morning, I don't think it would be such a big deal if somebody is out shopping for a party late that night. That might be a convenience. So, But this is the only gas station that has liquor. And um, Mayor Haggerty did that during the pandemic as he did allow, was one of the first um, mayors to allow um, cocktails at the curb, mixed pre-mixed cocktails to be sold at the curb. Of course, what happened was later on, Pritzker or um, the Liquor Commission, State Liquor Commission decided, oh, that wasn't a good idea. And mm -hmm. so they, they penalized all the bars and restaurants and cocktail lounges for eight months and denied that right and overruled the local liquor commissioners. And so it put many of those locations underwater and then suddenly got you know, religion and opened up and allowed uh, cocktails at the curb. And as you know, that really helped all those um, restaurants and bars come back. Um, 
So this is a request from probably one of the most responsible businesses and most of our businesses are responsible, but this place has just gone above and beyond the call of duty. It's a spotless facility. Um, they've, they've never had any issues. They've, um, they've been supportive of the Police and Fire Foundation beyond anybody's imagination. They, they've just done so much in the community. Um, but more importantly, they've been a responsible seller of beer and wine and, and, and beer and wine. And so um, that's why I would support their request. I, I, I don't think it makes a big difference. I don't know how much more beer and wine they sell at six o'clock, but I guess a few people want to buy it at that time. But since there's never, ever been a problem, and this is a 24-hour station, by the way, so they're open all night long. And so they, they're subjected to all sorts of possible issues for 24 hours a day, and they've never really had any. And like they just said, all of their pumps have been uh, replaced. They're brand new. The place... It's really a pleasure to go there and get gas. You know, I mean, it's, I, I rarely go anyplace else. So it's, it's, you know, and it is in the eighth ward and it, it does enhance that area. The Sports Dome, the Cube Smart, Gordon Foods. I mean, it's, it's really quite a little community there. And, you know, they all, they share parking with the Sports Dome. They, they reached out right away when Sports Dome got overloaded and said, hey, yeah, you can park behind our gas station. You're, you know, you need spaces. We're going to help you out. So that's what I'd have to say. Thank you. I, I'm almost sure I've never heard anyone describe a gas station as a pleasure to get gas at. So that's a... That's a <laughs> I know, I know. But it really is. It's nice and clean. And they have one of those... Um, uh, Patrick Hughes installed one of those uh, deals where you can... If you're handicapped, you can press a button at the pump and somebody will come out and, and pump your gas for you. So that's a good thing too. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I mean, look, I, I don't want to do anything at six in the morning. Um, so I, I don't, you know, I'm probably the wrong person, the wrong audience for this. Um, I would just say, personally, I'm comfortable with this, but I, I agree with, with Commissioner uh, Macbeth that we, if, if we do this, it should be because we're comfortable with grocery stores selling alcohol starting at six, um, and we should be prepared for others to come and, and make that request. I think if we vote for this with the intention of turning down requests from other grocery stores, it's gonna be, we'll, we'll need to only do that with really clear reason and, and, a, and a genuine distinction. Um, well, Mayor, uh, Mayor, how many grocery stores are open at six? That's a great question. I could ask Brian that question, but it's pretty unfair to ask him. Um, um, There's probably a few open at seven, but uh, six seems kind of early. Yeah, I think they're open 24 hours. The station is. Um, I mean, like Jewel, yeah. Jewel used to be open 24 hours. I don't. I'm. I don't know if they are anymore. There's a demand in the city. Just because you know business to get demand, but do we know that there's a demand for? I mean, like, for example, the CBS near our house that does sell alcohol, they're certainly open at seven. They might, have, I forget if they open at six, but they're open at seven for sure. Um, you know, I, I, would, I would just recommend if someone wants to vote for this, that they'd be prepared to have a serious discussion about voting yes for something similar for a place like this as well. Yep, go ahead. Yeah. Our customers, if they come in for a gas at 6 a.m., and if they have a party in the evening, they would, they would not come back to us, right? Right. They would, right. Yes. And then they, have, they would have to go to the other store to buy that liquor. So, you know, we lose our customer, and if they have other things, then, you know, we lose our business as well. And we lose our customer. That's absolutely right. And just to be, to be a selfish monster about it, there's no reason for the city to assume that that hypothetical customer shops somewhere else in Evanston. That's okay. 
Okay, for they the, have somewhere else, but you know, they, they shop. Well, that, well, my point is for the city that has an interest in the sales tax revenue, mm -hmm. when you lose a customer, we also may be losing them to uh, mm -hmm. a different jurisdiction altogether, and that, that could be impactful on our bottom line as well. So it's, we have a shared interest here this, to a certain yeah. extent. Yeah. And also, Mayor, you might be surprised some places might not want to be selling liquor at six o'clock in the morning. I mean, that's that's a possibility. Well, as I indicated, I don't want to do anything at six in the morning. So I I know me either. I would never be surprised by someone not wanting to do something at six in the morning. <laughs> um, are there further questions either from Commissioner Phillips or Commissioner Beth for further discussion? I believe Mr. Hletko wanted to uh, make a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sure. As, a, as an Evanston resident and as an Evanston voter as well, I would be entirely in favor of this proposal uh, with my only possible objection, my desire to include distilled spirits in the license as well. Um, but uh, that would be an addition rather than a yes. It's a yes and not a no but. Uh, but I vote and I'm in favor of it. Great. Um, well, seeing, seeing this robust input, um, and I think seeing no more questions from the commission, uh, I would entertain a motion on item at this time. I'll take this one too, I guess. Uh, I move to, uh, uh, sorry, I'm just going over here. I move to uh, propose the amendment to so Commissioner Phillips, I believe, just <laughs> indicated that he moves approval of the approval. amendment approval. to the Class O ordinance uh, indicated mm -hmm. in um, indicated in item F on the agenda. A free free on the agenda. Is that correct, Commissioner? Thank you. I need to go on with the language Is there a second to that motion? Uh, I will second that motion. Um, so this motion is made by Commissioner Phillips and seconded by Mayor Biss. Um, is there any further discussion before the roll call? In that case, uh, Commissioner Phillips? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Commissioner McBeth? Abstaining. And Mayor Biss votes yes. So on a vote of two to zero, uh, this motion passes. Um, and this item will be on the January 10th City Council agenda for introduction. Unlike items A through E, Something like this would not customarily be for introduction and action at the same time. So it would likely have to be voted on both the 10th and the 24th. Uh, but we'll, we'll arrive to council with a favorable recommendation from this committee. Thank you. Um, Thank you. That brings Thank up. You. Thank you. And thanks. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Ray, for your for your input. Um, it's great to great to see you and great to have you here. And also, frankly, the history is very helpful. Um, this brings us to item G, which seems like it's kind of a dealing with the phantom. So I'm guessing there's nobody here to testify in support of it. Um, Brian? Right. Um, yeah, it's, I honestly, I just put it on the agenda just out of an overabundance of caution. Um, this business went out of, uh, Ingrape Company, I believe it's called, went out of business and um, they're no longer holding a liquor license and just to, to clean up the, uh, the code. We, that that amendment needs to be approved. So that, no matter how the liquor commission, uh, the, the, the liquor board votes, in grape company no longer is in business uh, in Evanston. Right, right. Now that's probably out of our control. Um, I know that Commissioner Phillips had a question on this topic. Yeah, Brian. Um, my my question on this is uh, why not? Why do we need to? keep this license in the code and reduce the number of available licenses. I mean, I assume this is a legal thing we have to do this because, because of the license is no longer. Can you explain the background? Uh, the, the background of it, I can't explain it. Um, it's just how things have been written into the code since I started doing uh, liquor licensing. Um, I, I, if I had to guess, it's just another way of keeping track of liquor licenses in the city. Um, you're right, it, or it does kind of cause an administrative headache just to have to add it and um, delete them. But I guess it makes sense in, in, in a way because 
when city council approves these licenses, that's kind of how they're approving it via ordinance and changing the code. So the code is changing when they approve each license and it's approved and it's changing the code by adding a, a, a number or adding a license holder to that particular class. Well, is the issue that they use the code to determine how many licenses are available? No, it can, that's, they, they change it upon approval. It's changed upon approval. So well, let me ask you this, what happens if we didn't do this? Can I just amend that question to put it? It seems to me like there are three things we could do here. Right. One is what you're suggesting, which is replace the number one with the number zero in the code. Right. One would be to delete this license altogether, since there aren't any. So why should we have a phantom part of the code that describes a type of license that doesn't exist? And the third is to do nothing, because after all, what the code says is no more than one such license shall be enforced. And in fact, zero is a number that is no more than one. And so we're, we're, we're currently in compliance. So between those three options, why, why is staff recommending option one as opposed to option two or three? Honestly, they're both viable. They're, all three of them are viable options. Um, I guess the third option, um, yeah, I guess I hadn't even considered that um, that uh, as a possibility, but sure, yeah, it, it just, I guess it doesn't, at, in this, in, at the end of the day, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's more of just like cleaning up the code. Yeah, I don't care enough to vote no. I just, it just seems, it seems weird to have a, the law say, here's a type of life, it's just like, it's just like, it seems like a philosophy test or something. You know, here's a type of license, Right. Here are all the specs, all the details, and by the way, the, the number of them that exist is always zero. The only reason I guess I can see to keep it there and have it it's to keep the class M license and have it at zero is in case there's another similar business that wants to open up in um, the city, and so we don't have to rewrite the code to include you know a class M license. But you know, I guess realistically, the chances of that happening are somewhat remote. Or at least they're not, it's not an urgent thing. But if you, if you leave it the way, if you do nothing, then that license is available for another business that will hold it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, what Brian is saying is that the, the code is actually acting as a record keeper of how many right, licenses exactly. there are, not actually how many licenses there can be. Right, right. right? So every time we pass an ordinance to get a new license, it ups one of those numbers because, right, right. you know, it, which is kind of an odd way to do it, but it worked, I suppose. Right, but just, you know, in the future, if some business were to apply for that license and it hadn't been changed to zero and it was still at one, I guess, I guess there's a way around it, but what, what I, the ordinance that I would submit to city council wouldn't have any amendments to it. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, I'm not trying to be the flying right here. I just, when I looked at this, it just didn't make sense to me. And so, but if, if I'm, if I'm making a stick about this, I'm, I'm causing heartache. If you have a process that works, then I'm <laughs> no, you're not. You're not. These are all good questions. When I started doing the liquor licensing stuff, I asked Hugh, "Why do we do this?" And he just kind of was like, eh, "It's just how we do it." And <laughs> kind of like you, um, I didn't really. It didn't. I didn't. It didn't bother me enough to actually raise a you know questions as to why we, how we should change it. Sure. Yeah, I mean, just to me, it would seem to make more sense to have on the books the available liquor licenses that there were and not keep bringing stuff before city council every time a license, you know, you give one out or, or need to assign one, but that's the way it's working for the city. Right? Well, look, I, I think the actual point here is that the number, no one has decided, oh, here's the max we really actually ought to have. That's true, right? No one said like, oh, Actually, our judgment is we don't want more than, right, right. than you know, five liquor stores of a particular type. And so the, the ordinance, the code says five because we mean it. And we really have to be given an awfully good reason to go, go to six. Like that's not how these numbers are operating that, at that's all. That's what I thought. I but, and no one, and, but no one has given, no one has done that project. And I think that giving someone that project as homework actually would be a lot of work that may not benefit anybody very much. But now, wait a minute. In the downtown area, there is this restricted number on something in those codes. 
in the downtown area that yeah. that whatever block whatever there are restrictions there are only a certain number of licenses that are distributed yeah and the primary what do they call that the, uh, the, the term for the, the core the core retail area is the core the region core? yeah but beyond that i think mayor business point is that there aren't any you know essentially the the code is the record of how many businesses there are over the license is not the maximum one to have town i I, I, I do I it was, more as uh, go ahead. Um, go no, ahead I, we have we have talked about this for years. The abundance of codes of, of liquor license ordinances we have, and we have had at times where you are making specific ordinances for a particular business, and it was becoming or it becomes overwhelming in that you've got all these things that are really tailored to one business, and there was discussion of trying to combine or coordinate the ordinances so there won't be quite so many individual ones so that if you could put them so there would be not necessary okay you can only have 10 of this type of license but to get licenses that were basically very similar and getting them under one roof rather than to have all these individual ordinances I think we sort of named all the options. I want to firmly put myself in the camp and not care what we do. Um, is, would anyone, I would, I think we're probably ready to vote or not vote as people prefer. Does someone want to make a motion on this topic? We've done a lot of discussion. What exactly is the motion saying? Well, the, the, what the agenda says is decrease the number of class M licenses from one to zero in the code so that the code matches the fact that that business no longer is here. That's a thing we could do. Or we could just go home. I guess my, my thoughts are, I don't want to, if there's a system that's currently used, I don't want to disrupt that system until we have a coordinated plan going forward because I feel like that just, that just introduces another ad hoc system on top of the existing system. So I would vote to go with the flow so essentially, I vote to proceed as it is. That's my thoughts. I don't know, Brian. Is that I, I'll, I, I, I guess I'll say that you know, with some of the more common licenses like a Class D, Class C, um, those licenses, those are more like the restaurant licenses are the ones that are more commonly applied for. And when I put something before City Council for approval, when they're approving it, what they're approving is essentially just that change to the ordinance that says, you know, the the number of license, class D licenses in the city at any one time will be will be 50 instead of 55, it's crossed out and put 56. That's the thing that they're that's the ordinance and that's the change to the code that the city council is approving when they approve a class D or like one of those more common licenses. And in this particular case, with it just being reduced to zero, yeah, it's kind of an absurd result. I get that. Mm -hmm. But just to kind of maintain the consistency for all of the classes, um, that's just how, you know, we've gone, gone about it. Is that a you want to make a motion? Well, I would, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the proposed amendment to class of ordinance to reduce the number of available licenses from one to zero. I agree. I second. Right. So, Commissioner Phillips moves to approve the proposed amendment to class of ordinance. The uh, the uh, motion activated light in <laughs> room 2404 went off at that moment in celebration of the fact that we are nearing the end of our agenda. Commissioner McBeth seconds. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, Commissioner uh, Phillips. I approve, yes. Commissioner McBeth. I approve. Uh, Mayor Biss approves as well. And on a three to zero vote, um, this will also be sent to council. Um, thanks again to everyone for participating. Uh, Brian, really especially thank you and hope you feel better soon. Thank uh, you. And with that, seeing no further business to come before us, the December 17th meeting of the Evanston Liquor Control Review Board stands adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks. Everybody, thank you. Hey, thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you. Very well. Yep.